Um, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Arise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and every sprawl. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to the June meeting. Um, we unfortunately don't have Larry here today. He had a, an emergency, so won't be here this, this uh, evening for the meeting. Um, so we'll um, sort of just review the um, health officer notes today um, rather than having Larry make a formal presentation. So I'll just uh, start with that. It looks like about 30 food inspections, 24 bathing place inspections, um, and six quality of life issues. Um, and yeah, that's about all he left for me for his, his month, and I'm sure he would have a lot to add. Unfortunately, he cannot be here today. Um, we'll move on to the um, review of some previous minutes. Um, I, I did mention in an email to the board that we um, had to uh, approve an earlier minutes because they were either not included or there were some updates. And there, and there were some updates, I should say. There was a, they were not included in the email initially, and then uh, Dr. Humphreys pointed out some um, mistakes. So I updated those, and, and they were emailed to each board member. So we can start with the, um, was it the March? March? Yeah, the March meetings, which were updated on 424. Did anybody get to have any, any concerns with the March minutes? The only thing I would correct is Dr. Khanna's name. It's it's spelled, it's spelled incorrectly, thank you. Okay. Yes, it is. So we will correct that on the record. But uh, uh, as of that, we can probably approve this, the March 16th, 2015 uh, minutes. Does anybody have any objections? Uh, we'll no, I make a, a motion to approve. Uh, anybody with a second? And any, uh, all voting for yes? I'll second that. Okay. okay, yes. And any nays? All right, they are passed. And then uh, did anybody have a, any, any issues or concerns with the April or the May minutes? Okay. Okay, so we'll um, group approve those as well. Anybody would like to move to approve the April and the May minutes? Moved, anybody? I'll, I'll okay. approve them. I'll approve too. Okay. And we'll do another vote. Anybody, uh, yes for the approval of the May and the April meeting the minutes? May minutes? Yes. 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 No, no. Yes. Good. Okay, they are approved. We want to add you so we'll put April. those on the website so they're available to the public as well. And. Uh, of course, the video presentation of our meetings is always available on the website as well. But not May, right? Hmm? No, we're fine. Okay. All right. So well, let's just um, head into some old business to start with and, and, and kind of wrap some things up for the year. Um, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but I'm, I'm sure that you've heard. The Board of Health does not meet in July or August in the summer, so we uh, finish up um, our, our business for the year in the June meeting. Uh, and. Are there anybody, does anyone have any final updates prior to us uh, breaking for the summer that they wanted to bring up from old business? Because I have a few small things to bring up. Nothing big, okay. I, I so, think we have a few items, you know, the uh, mission statement, but. Yeah, that's what we need to right. yeah. yep. So we'll start with the, uh, the mission statement, I think is a good thing to sort of get, get wrapped up a bit. I know we, last meeting we had some discussion about, um, you know, you know, do we want to in involve the Board of Commissioners with our, with our mission statement, that what they want us to do, and I think, a, you know, to, for us to sort of you know, give our, our ideas of what we as a board want to do for the community, um, and then if the board of commissioners has anything to add or wants to us to, to also approve, I think we can am amend this in the future, but I think that we've put some time into this. Dr. Humphreys initially made uh, our mission statement, wrote the mission statement, and then it was uh, revised a bit by um, uh, some of our, of our board members. So, um, and it seems to be flowing pretty well now, so I think it's uh, something that if we could, you know, sort of vote on today and make it our, our mission, so at least we have this on paper, and then we can amend this as, as need be uh, next year if we need to, but I think it's a, a pretty broad and good statement here. So I'll just read through this for the public. Um, the revised version now is, the mission of the Radnor Township Board of Health is to advise the Board of Commissioners and the Department of Community Development on matters of public health and to furnish science-based recommendations on public health policy, prevention-oriented programs that promote and protect the health of all township citizens, advocacy for the optimal health environment in the township, and a forum for township residents to voice their questions and concerns. The township's, uh, the, the township's health officer acts as a liaison between the board and the township and administration. I mean, that pretty much caps off what we do. Yeah. So. 
I don't yep. know if there's anybody who has any problems or issues with it, or if we would, could take a vote on that and just make that our our, our statement. Anyone? Issues, concerns? No. Revises? Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. adding something around, since a lot of us, that we have lay people as well, but mm -hmm. a lot of us are professionals, physicians, nurses, lab, um, maybe saying something to the effect of um, their duties include providing professional advice or just okay. advice. I don't know, just something to throw out there. Let me see. So in the, in the area of, for science-based recommendations on public health policy, prevention-oriented, you mean in the prevention-oriented programs? So in the second sentence, um, their duties also include providing professional advice to the Board of Commissioners? I don't know. I think that's just fine the way it is. Um, I have to Dr. Foreman, did you receive the email from Mr. Nagel, Mr. Nagel that said. we just got? that had the information. So maybe we want to postpone oh, this. I didn't get an email. <laughs> well, I think it just came okay. when I walked when I walked in. Okay. So apparently somebody found uh -huh. the, everything that we needed that's already written down. So okay. maybe we should postpone right, this until okay. we read this and all right. we can mesh it all together. That sounds like a plan for my summer then. Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> I, it, I agree with you. You know what it gives you the code what code we operate under yeah. and yada yada yada. Okay. So isn't that correct, Mr. Nagel? Yeah, what it? happened is, as usual, I forgot about it until tonight when I said, <laughs> oh, we have a Board of Health meeting. Okay. So I dug out. Uh, we had started a couple years ago on trying to put together a board handbook because many of the boards struggle with what their roles are. And so I excerpted the part of the draft, but I also included the piece out of the Township Code that describes. And it really is consistent with what you just read. There's no inconsistencies or uh, anything diametrically opposed. Well, let's review that then um, this, this, uh, over this break, and then we'll make that our, our, our mission in the first meeting to, to sort of just finally approve this thing and get this kind of on the books. That sounds like a good plan. I will read through the township uh, code email. Excellent. And then as far as the, going back to the, um, uh, your, your statement about the professional advice, um, I think that's probably a, an interesting, uh, interesting thought because we are, you know, obviously all experts in our fields, or we tend to hope we are, and um, give our giving our professional opinion on these things. So let's, um, I'll make a note of that as well, and we'll kind of hash this out through email this summer as well. Recognize too that the code actually does require that at least five members of the board be medical professionals or you know work in the field. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right, well, um, we do have um, uh, also, is that on here? Hold on. I didn't put it in the, in the minutes. Okay. I, I, we definitely want to um, uh, do some, uh, I guess this would be under new business, would be to uh, recognize our, our students uh, who helped us greatly this year and who did a nice, uh, who, did, who, who both did some very nice projects for us as well uh, and for the township. Um, so we would like to recognize our, our, our students today. Uh, for their help during this year, and uh, and uh, we'll give them a little certificate and presentation. So, Amy, Amy would you help us out with that? So, uh, Ritvik and Just, we really wanted to thank you for all the work that you've done this year, and you've been invalu to, invaluable to us and the Board of Health, and um, your expertise in the subject matters that you have taken on. And we wanted to take this opportunity to recognize you more formally here in the township. And so, we have certificates for you, and we would like to take some pictures that we can put on the website. Um, so if we could all maybe gather in the front, we're going to do some pictures. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for your Wish you here. so yeah. well. And next year, you must keep in touch with us. Absolutely. Feel free to come back at any time and update on what you're doing. I can't on. wait to just get out. No, come back. We should start a board of health alumni program. Yeah. <laughs> where we can keep in touch with all of them. All right. 
right, just to remind everybody, Jess did her presentation on the um, gift of life, correct? And uh, uh, Rivik, you did your presentation on uh, chemical safety, correct? Thank you for that. All right. Um, as I said earlier, this, the Board of Health takes a summer hiatus um, uh, for two months. If there's any issues that occur during the summer, um, Mr. Taltone usually will email the, the, um, the, the, uh, the commissioner of the board, and uh, we will deal with um, any issues that need to be done either via email or um, to call a meeting in the, in the summer if there's some sort of emergency um, issue. So through the summer, um, I'm hoping to email um, the board a couple of times just to kind of give any updates that I get and also to discuss some plans for the early meetings uh, next year, which would include presentations that anybody would like to make or has a, um, any thoughts or subjects that we'd like to bring up. Um, Kevin, last week at the meeting, I mean last month at the meeting, I, I, I don't think you were here, um, we were discussing a bit about uh, possibly for next school year, is there some way that you know, if, if something like the um, outbreak of pertussis, for example, um, happened, is it possible for me to be, or the, the, the board themselves, and any of the members of the board, to be on sort of an email chain or some kind of communication just to give us updates on, on status of things from the health of the school is concerned? Uh, we can certainly look into that. I mean, the, uh, we work with the, like the, Pennsylvania Department of Health uh, when any, any outbreak occurs. Uh, you know, we certainly can notify you with, in regards to what we're doing, but you know, we take direction from them when that happens. Of course, and, and we understand that the Pennsylvania Department of Health is responsible for those things. I think when um, I get my updates, I usually get them via you know, my children who go to the school. Um, a lot of the people who are on the board don't have you know, kids in that age range. And uh, there were questions from the community concerning this, I guess, at a, a, a different time. So I wanted to make sure that we have just the most current information from the school that's allowed. Obviously, HIPAA uh, being, uh, uh, you know, has to be followed, the federal laws on privacy. Um, but just the, the general sort of uh, information, if we can get that from the school, if we can arrange to do that next year, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, we can, we can share the notices that we Thank share. You. Thank you. Well, Dr. Foreman and Kevin, what I think is important is if it comes directly from you, um, then you don't have the whisper down the lane uh, situation, that we actually have accurate information when the community contacts us, and there were, say, at the beginning, seven cases, and then they said, oh, we heard there were 20. And, you know, that's how it all goes. So this way we have accurate information that, no, there you know, it was seven, then it went to 12, or whatever the case may be. So that's all, and we understand, obviously, having worked in the school district, who school districts take their direction from, but we're such a small town, and it would be great to have uh, accurate information regarding the health of our schools. That's all, thank you. Um, because um, uh, we're, our meeting is going to probably be a little bit shorter tonight, we usually we start our um, presentations around 5:30, but we've had some um, some changes this month, this week, this month rather. So I would like to welcome um, Andrea Gilbert from Mainline Health, who's going to just update us on Bryn Mawr Hospital and Mainline Health um, updates or changes. Thanks. Good. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I thought I'd give an update on um, sort of the the state of the union, if you will, of the, uh, the bigger issues and the more important issues, and then I'm happy to answer questions if I don't cover anything. Um, probably the most important news for um, certainly Bryn Mawr Hospital is our announced um, major campus redevelopment uh, modernization project, which was uh, approved by our board in December, and um, um, we are full steam ahead. I mean, it's been almost a decade since we've um, studied the needs of the hospital and the community, and I think, as I reported last time, we um, are uh, f have finalized this, this plan to address sort of the um, three primary and most pressing issues on the campus. One, private rooms um, and the need to really update our inpatient, as much of our inpatient patient care area, um, overnight stay areas for our patients. And secondly, to address our ORs, and after a lot of study, uh, we um, have concluded that rather than renovating ORs in place that, and expanding, that we will create all new ORs, um, and that will happen in the new building that will um, be built in the middle of our campus attached to the existing hospital structures. And then um, 
The third is our critical care unit. Uh, we have two, um, and we are going to create a new 18-bed uh, critical care unit uh, in the new pavilion as well, and if needed, continue to operate one of the better two units that um, currently resides in the uh, existing hospital. So this is a project that will, um, it's a $200 uh, million dollar project. Um, it is also, a two, that's a total project cost, that's not a construction cost, so that's total project cost. And then um, the building itself will be uh, approximately 200,000 um, square feet of new space. And the building, um, if you know the campus, um, will um, be located in the middle of the campus where the Clothier building was the old nursing dormitory building. Um, you'll enter the building through the warden lobby. Um, so the current entrance of the hospital will stay the same. We'll improve it with this um, project. And then you'll basically walk through the warden lobby again, which will be um, really improved for patient access and really updated in terms of um, all of the electronic and wayfinding um, and waiting space and all of the, the things that we want to accomplish in this. And then enter the new building as you basically walk through that area and walk th and into the, the what will be the new surgical um, waiting and surgical programs, upper floors, two floors of beds, and then uh, the top floor of this building will be our critical care um, unit. The building will be um, constructed uh, with the capability of adding over time uh, an additional four stories. Um, and again, that is if in fact down the road there is um, a need to expand this facility. Our projections indicate right now as we best look out into the decade and beyond that inpatient utilization will not require it, but um, we want to pursue as flexible a plan to meet the needs of the community as possible. And we think that spending the money today on the foundation and the, and the capabilities of growing vertically if needed is what is appropriate. Um, so that is what um, we have in store. In addition, we are um, going to be building a new medical office building. Am I getting a lot of feedback? Can you hear me fine? Um, a medical office building on Bryn Mawr Avenue across the street from the ER, current ER. Uh, and in front of the newest parking garage on Bryn Mawr Avenue that's actually set back from Bryn Mawr Avenue. And there's a footprint there that um, had been zoned when we went and appro uh, received approvals for the zoning for all of this work back in the late uh, 2005, 6, 7, 8 timeframe to create a new office building, medical office building. And so that project um, is being planned right now. We are working with a developer, Duke Realty, um, who is somewhat new to this area, but very well known um, uh, real estate developer nationally with a lot of medical, um, medical center experience. So they are our partners. They will uh, be constructing the building. We will lease them the land. And the property um, is, the project will begin in the fall, and we expect that project to be completed. It's going to be a four-story off medical office building, and um, that project will get completed at the end of 2016. Um, and then the hospital project will begin the uh, spring of 2000. 16, so a year from now, essentially. And the new hospital building is projected to uh, for occupancy in the end of 2018. Um, so a lot, a lot going on on the campus. And um, again, I think that it um, represents sort of our mainline health, our sort of assessment of all of our facilities, starting initially at Paoli, um, now probably over five to eight years ago, Lankinaw's recent major project that was completed about a year and a half ago. Now Bryn Mawr's, um, the investment in the Bryn Mawr campus. And um, you know, we think that uh, um, all of that is exciting for the community and certainly exciting um, for the health system. Um, the last time I was here, we talked about uh, cardiac surgery and the transition of the surgical piece of the cardiovascular program has occurred. Um, it was really a slow wind down. Um, I think the last open heart surgery we did at Bryn Mawr was just after the first of the year. So we're probably six months almost into this transition. Um, and it's going very well. Again, this wasn't a plug that we pulled overnight. It was a discussion with the cardiologist and the medical staff over a series of years. 
and some very in-depth planning around the clinical management of patients um, so that um, there is a um, there is a whole team and a, and a plan and um, some drills that have occurred and will continue to occur around managing um, a patient who has an inter a cardiac interventional, either um, a, um, cardiac catheterization or electrophysiology procedure at Bryn Mawr, all of which will continue and has continued in a very robust way. Um, with CT surgery on site uh, for patients who are deemed high risk for those procedures, so it's all very coordinated. Um, in the event that uh, we have a patient who has to go to surgery or is a potential surgical candidate, they are um, uh, if stable, they are transported to Lankanaw, um, and that has actually has happened once or twice over the last six months. Um, very, um, you know, very standard. Of, uh, very standard. Uh, everything went as planned. Patients have done very well. Um, if we um, are in a situation where a patient is not stable, uh, we have the equipment on site at Bryn Mawr, and the team um, is is mobilized. And um, of course, the surgeon is likely to be at Bryn Mawr. The rest of the team is in place. Um, and uh, the surgery would occur at Bryn Mawr. Um, and that would be a very unusual case, but one that we drill for um, and one that um, is certainly um, um, potentially part of uh, the scenario. And we think if you uh, are current, as I know you are, on what's happening across the country and what the dialogue is around um, um, high-risk surgical or any real uh, procedural work. Um, volume is really important. I think the case in, in Florida on cardiac surgery, I think, um, certainly uh, resonates in this case that what we want to do is, as a health system, uh, leverage the assets of the health system and, and the capabilities of our system to meet the needs of our patients, but not to con contemplate that we, just because we are a robust health system, can do everything everywhere um, and want to make sure that um, patients come first and that we are um, adequately contemplating and planning for those needs in the right place at the right time. And, and I think we feel very good about this plan. I know that the medical staff um, and especially the cardiologists, I think, have, um, you know, I can't say that they are excited about it. You know, you'd like to be in a hospital that has the capability of doing absolutely everything for your patients. Um, but I think they are certainly supporting this. And um, for me to be in a medical staff meeting with probably 150 physicians and going through this plan, just sort of dotting the I's and crossing the T's uh, at our medical staff meeting um, just about a month ago, and th for there to be no dialogue, no questions, no discussion on this issue, I think suggests that um, we've done the right thing and that we've got the right pieces in place to make sure that we are providing the safest care for our patients. A um, couple of the other updates. Um, I think you know that um, just in terms of leveraging the assets of our health system, you know, we've got this major investment at, at Bryn Mawr. We've, uh, we are currently providing the interventional stroke care for the mainline health system at Bryn Mawr. We are the pediatric site for care, inpatient and ER care, and we are the psychi inpatient psychiatric care for the health system as well. So, you know, we'll continue to evaluate um, how, to, how best to distribute services to meet the needs of the broader community. And, and again, I suspect that we'll have dialogue down the road about other things um, uh, in general around the health system and other programs that we develop at one hospital um, and not three. Um, but again, that's in the interest of both um, you know, what is sustainable, what is good care, what is safe care. Um, but again, that's the picture today, and, and I'm uh, happy to take any questions on that. Um, just uh, two other uh, highlights since we last talked, and uh, probably that bear um, just some updates. The entire mainline health system was, um, has achieved the magnet designation. Magnet designation is, uh, we believe, and still is, a very prestigious recognition of nursing excellence, really defining the clinical excellence. And I know because Linda Shaney, as you know, is one of our star nurses at, at Bryn Mawr. Um, but I think um, really represents the kind of um, professionalism of nursing. Uh, and we went through a process of uh, Bryn Mawr, Paoli, and Lankanaw Hospital had been designated magnet twice. It's a pretty rigorous uh, process. Um, takes several years to get ready for that kind of um, 
process and certification, and we went through the process for the entire health system, um, including Bryn Mawr Rehab Hospital, Riddle Hospital, and our home care programs. And they all uh, were part of the most recent process, and we were in designated as a health system, as a magnet system. I think there are only uh, s seven uh, across the country systems that have gone through the process, and I think um, really speaks to the investment that our health system is making in what we consider to be a, uh, an incredibly important um, component of care. Um, and let's see. Um, really, I think that's it. Um, as I'm looking at my notes, but uh, I may have missed something. If there is uh, uh, an update on any anything you've heard about, anything that I can answer, but I would suggest that those are probably the most significant highlights that I thought would be of interest to the board tonight. Questions, anybody? Thank you very much for the update. Appreciate that. Good. Okay. Thank you. Proud to work in the mainland health system myself with great nurses at Paoli. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, so we'll move on to the announcements, and um, we sort of hit most of them, but I will kind of go out of order here, but we'll send a congratulations over the airways to our, our board member, Dr. Louise Fitzpatrick, who can be here today on her honorary degree um, from Villanova, honorary doctorate at Villanova for her great work there uh, for many years in their, in their, in their nursing program, and uh, I believe that was uh, in the papers as well, so congratulations to her. Um, and as we move into the summertime, we do have to uh, recognize the um, importance of uh, keeping our skin protected from the sun. In the past three decades, there have been uh, a doubling of the number of cases of, um, of uh, melanomas, new melanomas that have been diagnosed uh, in the United States. Uh, the U.S. is a um, uh, is, is kind of late to the game in this. Uh, Australia has for many years uh, had large campaigns in order to protect their citizens from um, the sunlight and um, has had many um, uh, uh, advertising campaigns to uh, remind people to put on their, their sunscreen. Um, so we do have to be real cautious in, in the United States uh, on this as well to uh, protect our skin. Melanoma is the deadliest form of skin cancer and uh, sometimes when found it's already been, it's already spread to other places. We do want to protect our skin with uh, sunblock. Uh, any other announcements anyone has prior to the conclusion of this season on the Board of Health? No. Okay. And I don't see any public participation. Uh, except for the families that are here today. Thank you for coming, <laughs> families of our students. And I wish everyone a great summer. And if there's any issues that occur through the summer, please uh, feel free to email me uh, and we will deal with them. Thank you.